to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the important infection in our country that is typhoid. It's a very, very common fecal oral root infection. They may present with uh, diarrhea, high degree fever, step ladder fever, complications like perforations, all these things. We'll discuss about typhoid. We'll see the details of typhoid and treatment of typhoid. The organism is Salmonella typhi. So otherwise it is called as Salmonella endrica serotype typhi. There are two important types of uh, Salmonella. One is typhi and paratyphi. Paratyphi A, B, C. They are all gram negative, rod shaped, flagellated bacterium. You can see here, rod shaped, flagellated bacterium. Its transmission is mainly through fecal oral route. It enters to our body through the food, then it go to the intestine. From there, it will enter our blood and produce typhoid fever. Through the fecal route, it may go out. Again, it may contaminate your drinking water. From that source, it can re-enter to some other person. That is the route. That is called as fecal oral route. So during acute phase, patient can have fever, all these things. Then it will go to the, during the uh, convalescent phase or recovery phase, it will go to the gallbladder. So it can go to the gallbladder, through the gallbladder, it will go to the intestine. Sometimes that will remain in the gallbladder for longer period in a dormant state, but it will be continuously uh, sending out the bacteria through the stools and it can spread to other person. Now incubation period of this infection is 10 to 14 days, only after 10 or 15 days patient develops clinical findings of uh, typhoid. The bacteria enters to the lymphoid tissue or face patch, it is a lymphoid tissue in your intestine that, uh, that, uh, that enters to face patch and uh, from there uh, it produces uh, uh, further propagation, from there it will go to the blood then it will produce septicemia, all these things. So you can see here in this picture, it enters to your intestine, pious patch, it will uh, colonize or it will grow in the pious patch. From there, it will go to the bloodstream and produces clinical uh, fever, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly. Then it may enter to your uh, various parts of your uh, circulation and it produces uh, clinical findings of typhoid uh, around 1000 to 1 million there is a range of bacteria which can produce typhoid fever which enters to the intestine but remember that all depends on the host defense mechanism suppose somebody takes everyday contaminated food he will have a lot of uh, antibodies against this uh, bacteria so when the bacteria enters to the intestine and trying to get into your circulation, these antibodies will neutralize that. But if you are not exposed to this type of bacteria, then patient develops, uh, the bacteria enters to the circulation and patient develops typhoid. So that all en uh, depends on the patient's immune mechanism. Now, some patients, uh, even after the complete recovery, this uh, bacteria can present inside the gallbladder. From there, it will continuously uh, send out the bacteria to the intestine. Through the stools, it can go out and patient will be a chronic carrier. It contaminates the water, then reinfects some other person. Okay. So, that cycle continues. This type of carriers are called as healthy carrier, especially in uh, 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 those who are preparing food, they should be very careful. If once the patient develops typhoid and they have to rule out the carrier stage by testing the stool, that is very important. Now, the most common finding of typhoid, whether it is ty uh, Salmonella typhi or paratyphi, the most prominent clinical finding will be step ladder type of fever. You might have read in your book, step ladder type of fever means every time when the fever occurs, the, the intensity increases. If you give paracetamol, then it from there onwards, it will become flat. 
but you can see if you are taking even paracetamol every day fever is increasing that the septladder pattern may disappear but every day the toxicity and fever will increase even with paracetamol whereas other types of fever and all for for example leptospirosis for two three days patient will have fever then there will be a phase where there is no fever then only it develops the complication even in many types of viral fever dengue fever two three days he'll have high degree fever then the fever comes down okay mild fever but this is one condition every day fever increases if you don't treat with antibiotic every day fever increases this is called as step ladder type of fever but during the lysis that uh, if you give paracetamol or after profuse setting patient suddenly uh, have uh, a de sudden decrease in the temperature okay now other symptoms like uh, diarrhea is one of the most common finding in many types of uh, uh, typhoid especially salmonella paratyphi so this is a very common finding in paratyphi uh, more diarrhea is seen in paratyphi than typhoid typhi typhi typhoid abdominal pain is seen in many patients uh, then uh, headache on weakness uh, profuse sweating rashes all over body all these things can also be seen but the most important finding is step ladder fever and diarrhea well, there are uh, uh, like lot of uh, fever in our country we can see this type of rashes uh, uh, rashes all over the body during the fever uh, but uh, this type of uh, rashes in typhoid is not very common in our population because of the color of the skin we will not be able to see it properly they may have uh, but most of the time we will not be seeing or we will not be uh, observing that in a dark skin that is a problem but these spots are called as raw spots raw spots are slightly raised spots which fade on pressure that is very important which located over the chest and trunk mostly seen in da uh, mostly not seen in dark colored skin that's why i told in our country this has got uh, lesser value comparing with a uh, western patient it is seen only in 30% of the patients and it ap appears at the end of the first week and it resolves by uh, within 2 to 5 days most of the patients can have hepatosplenia megaly because they are also coming uh, uh, under the lymphatic uh, system they try to kill the bacteria that's why the size is enlarged liver uh, so for example this is the liver this is the spleen so both will be enlarged enlarged because any infection to kill the organism our lymphatic tissue has to work more so the size will be enlarged like lymph nodes will be enlarged liver will be enlarged spleen will be enlarged in most of the infections this is you can see that it's not only the feature of uh, typhoid it, it is seen in many other types of fever now another important finding in typhoid fever is relative bradycardia you, you can see that any patient who is coming with high degree fever you can see the heart rate increases heart rate may be more than 120 130 like that in many types of high degree fever but typhoid temperature increases but you are not seeing that proportionate that much proportionate elevation in the pulse rate that is called as relative bradycardia for every 1 degree celsius of the temperature you expect a, uh, you expect additional uh, 10 beats in your pulse but that is not seen in typhoid there are a lot of other conditions also you can see like this like patient who is on beta blocker you may not see it patients are, are, are having dengue fever you may not see that patients uh, who have some myocardial problem uh, because of the fever sometimes you can get unexpected tachycardia sometimes you can get bradycardia but this is the most important condition in our country which can produce relative bradycardia that is typhoid nervous system there is a condition called as muttering delirium coma vigil or nervous fever patient has altered sensorium and picking at the bed clothes that is very very important finding they pick up the imaginary objects from the bed sheet so this is very important finding in any type of typhoid fever or uh, typhoid encephalopathy 
and you can see a phase like here that is called as typhoid phases. It is a thin flushed phase with staring apathetic expression, but that these type of findings can be seen in many other types of uh, fever, not only in typhoid. Another important finding in the oral cavity is the coating of the tongue. Is you can see many patients with typhoid, uh, this is the tongue and uh, throughout the tongue white coating will be there. So that is a very classical finding in typhoid fever. So relative bradycardia, coating of tongue, all these things are very very important in typhoid finding. And if you do not treat the patient in third week, patient can develop inflammation of paste patch and patient can have perforations in the intestine and one of the classical findings of perforation is uh, gas under the diaphragm. You can see here gas under the diaphragm. So normally when you see the diaphragm there is no gas here but left side most of the time you can see the gas in the abdomen or in the stomach. But here in this patient you are seeing the gas under the diaphragm. That is a classical finding where you get perforation. So perforations are due to the inflammation of paste patch that is a classical finding seen in um, typhoid and a patient who is having peritonitis and perforation normally the pulse rate increases. This is one condition where the pulse rate increases in typhoid. Other complications like patient can have carditis, hepatitis, meningitis, nephritis, pneumonia, orchitis, arthritis, osteomyelitis. Many of these features you can see in most of our patients. Nephritis is not very very common but you can see in some patients. Nowadays we treat the patient early so that you are not seeing all these findings. Pneumonia is very important. Many of the patients who present with uh, pneumonia type of features, febrile seizures are very common in children and 1 to 5 percent can become chronic carriers. We have already explained that how the chronic carrier state occurs and that patient will be continuously spreading the disease and nearly 10 percent can have relapse in the symptoms. So we have to be uh, very careful, we have to closely watch these patients. So this is the slide which tell you that what happens in typhoid, this is a fecal oral uh, uh, route of transmission. Uh, there is an incubation period of uh, 1 to 2 weeks, uh, it adheres the uh, intestinal mucosa, especially in Peyer's patch, the, the Peyer's patch are inflamed. From there it will go to the mesenteric nodes, mesenteric nodes to reticuloendothelial system, then bloodstream that there it produces septicemia, it also infects the bone marrow, liver, spleen, gallbladder and gallbladder will become a chronic focus for the chronic carrier state. And complications like we have already seen that muttering delirium that is toxic encephalopathy, myocarditis, hemodynamic shock, necrosis of the Peyer's patch produces peritonitis and sepsis, uh, perforation, all these things. Now, what investigation you do in typhoid? Most of the bacterial infection, you can see the CBC, complete blood count, you can see uh, elevated WBC count. But one bacterial infection that reduces the WBC count or WBC count may be normal, that is typhoid. Okay. So, when you are seeing a patient in your OPD and if the counts are not elevated, it can be either viral or if it is bacterial, if you are suspecting bacteria, there is a high chance for typhoid fever. So, that is very important. Neutropenia can be seen in 10 to 15, sorry 15 to 25 percent and uh, uh, peritonitis can increase the count. So, third week of the infection slowly the count increases that indicates uh, a complication of typhoid. STOT, STPT can be elevated in hundreds, maybe 200, 300 that is a range we see routinely. Proteinuria is seen in many patients but uh, most of the fevers itself can produce proteinuria. Febrile proteinuria is a very common finding in many patients. So, proteinuria does not have major clinical implication. Blood culture positivity is very, very important because first week you will be able to see only blood culture positivity in typhoid. 90 percent of the patients can have positive blood culture in first week, 50 percent can be positive in second week. 
bone marrow culture can be done in uh, pyrexia of unknown origin if you think it is due to uh, typhoid stool culture third week you can do that is 30 to 40 percent patients can have stool culture even suspected chronic carriers or th those who are working in food industry they should do the stool culture to rule out uh, chronic carrier state another important investigation is voidal test voidal test is it detects uh, sulfur uh, to uh, antibodies against uh, typhoid antigens both flagellar or o antigen uh, antibody somatic or h antigens uh, antibodies can be detected the o titer is more important than h titer o titer 1 in 160 there is active inflammation or active infection going or a rapidly rising so today i am testing it is 1 in 1 in 80 so tomorrow it is or two days 1 in 160 then 1 in 320 like that if it is increasing rapidly rising titer is more important than single titer so fourfold raise in uh, repeated test after seven days it confirms the diagnosis so that is also very important H titer is not very important because it is an amnestic reaction. Many other infections can produce H titer. Previous infection can increase the H titer. So remember, O titer is more important than H titer. That's all enough. ELISA test is available. You can do IgM uh, test uh, in the early phases of the infection. Not in the first week. First week, uh, these antibodies will be will be negative. You can do all these things after five to seven days. Now, how do you treat the uh, typhoid? That is very important. Previously, we used to treat uh, with uh, ciprofloxin or any quinolone, ciprofloxin, nofloxin, all these things. Nowadays, we know that most of the typhoid bacteria are resistant to quinolone. So, you have to go for a third generation cephalosporin. So, third generation cephalosporin, IV available or ceftriaxone or cefotaxin. You have to give uh, three, 2 to 3 gram IV OD for 10 days. Or you can go for oral uh, tablet, Cefixim, 400 milligram BD. Cefotoxim is an alternative for ceftriaxin, same action. Chlorophenicol was used now, uh, previously. Nowadays, uh, previously it was withdrawn because of the resistance. Now, since we are not using this drug for many years, this also can be useful. In a patient with typhoid and cephalopathy, uh, these drugs may not be sufficient. There you have to give dexamethasone. Routine typhoid, we don't you prefer dexamethasone because of the fear of uh, intestinal perforation. But if we are treating a typhoid and cephalopathy, you have to give uh, steroids. Very high dose of steroids are required, like 3 milligram per kg uh, uh, steroid like dexamethasone. So 70 kg means you require very high dose, 3 mg per kg for 70 kg patients will be 210. Uh, milligram uh, 210 milligram of dexamethasone that's a very high dose so or you can go for methylprednisolone now how to prevent typhoid that is also very important uh, improve the sanitation avoid contamination of food or water try to treat the carrier patient carrier state with ciprofloxacin 500 milligram bd for six weeks so you have to uh, if the patient is in food in industry, you have, we have to be very careful. We have to treat this type of patients with ciprofloxacin for six weeks, or repeatedly test their stools, culture their stools for any positive organism. Otherwise, just treat them for six weeks with ciprofloxacin to avoid the reinfection to some other person. Vaccines are available nowadays. Uh, we can use vaccines to prevent typhoid. Those who are uh, working in food industry or those who are going to endemic areas vaccines can be useful so that will give protection against typhoid even one infection can so like uh, infection in a year can also protect but we uh, generally not don't prefer infection related immunity we can go for vaccine related immunity so once you take vaccine that can protect you against uh, virus and uh, it may protect you for nearly two years. So vaccine should be tried. And we have discussed about one of the important uh, problem in emergency room.
that is uh, uh, typhoid fever it is very very common patient with high degree temperature increasing in temperature in spite of giving high dose of paracetamol uh, step ladder type of fever fever with diarrhea fever with relative bradycardia quarter tongue with relative bradycardia and fever all these things point towards typhoid if the counts are normal then your diagnosis is mostly typhoid you can do blood culture in first week you can do uh, vidal test or uh, uh, antibody test in second week stool culture can be do done in third week ciprofloxacin or any other quinolones are not that drug of choice nowadays because most of the typhoid bacteria are resistant to quinolones we had go for third generation cephalosporin nowadays some uh, cases we can see even ceftriaxone resistant third generation cephalosporins are resistant to this bacteria so you have to go for drugs like president acerbactam or meropenem to cover this gram negative organism thank you